What is the most used man-made material on earth? You guessed it, it's concrete. Look around, it's everywhere. You see it in sidewalks, driveways, foundations, floors you stand on, and even entire structural building frames are made from concrete. So why don't we discuss it more? In each episode of Concrete Logic, we will explore one concrete-related topic with the help from industry professionals that are shaping the future of the trade. We'll talk with suppliers, contractors, architects, engineers, specialists, and even some proponents of competing materials about their views of concrete and their vision of its future. All right, welcome to another episode of Concrete Logic Podcast. And today we have Mark Chase with us from RPX Technologies, and he's going to help us uh, learn about maturity meters, maturity sensors, uh, something that I've used in the past and haven't seen in a long time. So he's going to brush off some cobwebs for me. Um, But Mark, could you uh, introduce yourself, give a little bit about your background and what your company does? Sure. Um, First of all, thanks, Seth, for um, inviting me. Um, My name is Mark Chase, as Seth said. I work for a company called RPX Technologies. um, And to kind of get you caught up on where we've been for the past, the the better part of the past 20 years, when I first started in the um, sensor technology for the construction industry uh, market, I joined a kind of a startup company in, in uh, out of Stillwater, Oklahoma, by the name of Ingeus. And we had a product called the Intellirock. Um, over the course of um, 15 years or so, uh, 15, 16 years, uh, we were bought by numerous companies and wound up uh, being uh, owned by uh, FLIR Systems uh, out of Boston. Um, <clears throat> Uh, just maybe three years ago, FLIR decided that they didn't want to be in the construction business anymore, so they they killed the entire business line that uh, myself and my colleagues were in. Uh, at that time, I went to work for another small engineering company out of Austin, Texas for a year, and then an opportunity uh, came up with the actually the original owner, uh, the original developers of the Intellirock um which is rpx technologies and uh, they came out with a new system called insight and for the past uh, almost two years that's where i've been so it's kind of gone full circle back to uh where i started almost 20 years ago wow and you said the 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 one company that was in construction was flair is that right that's correct yes you think they found out that maybe the margins in construction aren't that great <laughs> Well, uh, actually, no. Uh, um, as it turns out, FLIR wanted to get back to where their roots were, and that was uh-huh. uh, military sales, basically. So, oh, I got you. They specialized they, in that. Yes, they did. Uh, they were more, their main focus of business was the infrared camera market um, and, and military systems for gotcha. uh, or infrared cameras for the military. So, yeah. You've all, it sounds like you've always been in like technology type of businesses related to construction. Is that right? For the past 20 years, yes. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, cool. So uh, if you could, uh, let's, let's talk about what the uh, maturity sensors are and what, what purpose they serve, what problems they solve um, for the, I'm sure most of the listeners out there don't know what it is. Uh, it's not, at least in my area, it's not very popular um, in the type of work we do uh, in this region. I say in other regions it is, but uh, could you just give a, I guess, a brief uh, oversight of what what the sensors are? Sure. I, I think we have to start with uh, kind of the historical context of why maturity sen- sensors came into being. Um, <clears throat> the technology has actually been around for the past 40 or so years um, due to some construction accidents that happened uh, decades ago. Uh, 
they wanted to find a way to determine uh, actual uh, concrete strength in place rather than using a traditional cylinder break. So um, if you boil it down to very, very basics, maturity sensors, all, all they are really is just temperature sensors that are tracking the temperature change that's going on in curing concrete. It, and then you take that, that temperature reading, uh, put it into a very complicated formula that takes uh, basically time and temperature together. And uh, what you're looking at is that um, the hotter your concrete gets, the, the, the faster it's gaining strength. And since uh, you are leveraging uh, a, a larger amount of concrete that you pour in, like, say, a, uh, a post-tension deck, that concrete is going to um, retain heat for a longer period of time than a traditional cylinder would. <clears throat> so therefore, um, we always talk about the concrete curing cycle. Um, uh, and it, it, it's a, uh, a, a circular thing. Heat cures concrete, concrete retains heat, uh, and, and um, it, it just goes round and round and round. So, right. So Mark, you're and, telling me you're telling me that uh, concrete that's in a let's say a, a post tension deck, um, the the temperature of that, which could be what it could be hundreds of yards, right? Hundreds of yards of concrete, yes, but correct. right. So versus a what's a typical cylinder six by six by twelve. So that's right. Six by twelve or four by eight, sure. Four by eight. So you're telling me there's a temperature difference between those two, and that's based on essentially the mass, right? Is that a correct statement? That's a that's a correct statement. Yes. Uh, concrete generates heat. Um, we go back to the concrete curing cycle. Concrete generates heat. Heat cures concrete, and uh, that larger amount of concrete will retain heat for a longer period of time. And there's a correlation between that temperature and the strength of the concrete. And that's, that's what the, that's what these meters help us understand. That is correct, yes. So could you walk us through a um, a typical uh, project? How would you set up to use these meters versus what we uh, the traditional method, which is we get uh, mixed designs from the ready mix supplier. Um, we 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 have them through that submittal process. They have to provide us strengths over uh, three, seven, 14, and 28 days. They have to provide those strengths when they they provide um, when they submit the at ready mix uh, those different ready mix. Uh, uh, going blank today, the submittals um, when they submit that in. The traditional thing is to give those breaks. The, to determine the strength. So if you were going to use maturity sensors uh, versus the traditional, hey, let's break cylinders uh, at three day or two day, three day, seven day, whatever it is to determine the strength of the in-place concrete, um, how, how would we set that up? Sure. So um, uh, getting back to the start of your statement. So at the beginning of the project, you'll have several mixed designs uh, that are going to be used, you know, for footings, for columns, for decks. Uh, you may have two or three different mix designs that you're going to use for PT decks, which is typically what maturity is used for. Um, so each and every mix design has its own unique heat of hydration based due to the fact that it's got um, specific amounts of cement, uh, aggregate, sand, uh, admixes, et cetera, et cetera. Each of those mixed designs that you plan on using maturity with has to, you have to develop a calibration curve of that mixed design. Um, now we work off of the ASTM, which is C1074, which uh, details out the things that you need to do in order to sell it, set up that calibration curve. Uh, each mixed design, you need to take at least 17 cylinders to set up that curve. Uh, 15 of those of those 17, you will break in sets of three at different intervals. And then the two companion cylinders that get maturity sensors placed in them. So at those 15 cylinders that you break in sets of three, 
Um, say for a typical mixed design, um, you'll start that process at one day after you take all 17 cylinders. So at one day, you'll take three of those cylinders, break them for the average, and then you take maturity readings off the two cylinders that have the sensors in them. That becomes the first point on the curve. Then you repeat that process, like say at day two, at day three, uh, day five, day seven, and maybe if you want to extend that curve out to um, 28 days, you can. You just you just you know, cast three more cylinders. <clears throat> so what you wind up with is a curve um, that that has on one axis maturity, which is expressed in time and temperature, Celsius degree hours. And on the uh, other axis, you have PSI. Uh, so um, for every PSI, uh, that matches up to a specific maturity number. You then take that information, you take maturity sensors out into your first pour, your first PT deck, you place them uh, typically in the most conservative spots possible in that deck, which is uh, generally going to be out in the corners up towards the surface. That's where uh, more of the heat is going to be lost um, as that concrete cures. Now, um, most of the information that you're going to be wanting to see is going to happen within that first one to four day period. Um, once the sensors reach that certain maturity number that that matches up to the PSI that you're looking for in order to post tension, you can then start your early construction activities, uh, stressing cables, uh, removing formwork, uh, even in some cases saw cutting if, if we're talking about um, uh, pavement. So, okay. yeah, you get uh, essentially you get a real time look at what's going on in the concrete as that concrete is curing in the, in those early uh, periods. Um, so you're getting a more accurate depiction of what's happening because you're looking at the temperature changes in the concrete um, as it is occurring rather than trying to determine what that strength is by by uh, breaking a traditional cylinder, which sometimes is going to be field cured, which is um, not, a, not a, depending upon what you do with that field cured cylinder, it's, it, 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 it is generally not going to be as accurate as taking a, a maturity reading in the deck itself. Right. You're being really nice, Mark, about the field cylinders. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, so we've all, we, as, uh, as concrete, <laughs> contractors we've seen filled cylinders you know on on jobs um they get stored correctly uh, they get handled correctly and everything works out fine but then there are jobs where the cylinders aren't handled correctly um aren't stored correctly and are um th what happens is then those cylinders when they're they're taking off the job and everyone's depending on them to come up to strength. You, you take them to the lab and you break them and they come up short and then the whole job comes to a stop because you got to wait till, like you were saying, if you got a stress PT, if it's a post tension job, you got a stress PT before, uh, move, you know, removing form work and things like that. So if you have a, cylinder that doesn't come up to strength then the that's the engine structural engineer's way of of checking to see what is going on with the in place concrete and if uh that tiny six by twelve cylinder doesn't come up to strength then he that's typically what they use to say hey you know you can't stress yet you can't you can't remove form work yet until it comes up to the design whatever that uh and it depends on the spec right mark on correct yes yeah um so so what the maturity meter uh can do is what you're saying is there's a correlation again between uh time temperature and strength of the concrete and was it i, I didn't catch it mark is it an average of three broken cylinders when you're uh making that i guess the correlation when you're making that chart that's correct yes three so and you said it's the the you start it right away like the first day you're breaking cylinders and then how many 
how long do you have to do it? I, I, I don't remember that. How long do you have to keep breaking and taking temperature at the same time to um it, it well that all depends on on how uh, how far out you want to see and uh you know maturity information uh that correlates to, to that strength i mean you can run your curve out all the way to 28 days if you want uh but uh typically all the information uh the info that you're looking to um use this for is going to happen within that first one to five day period so um the most important thing about generating a maturity curve is is knowing what that mix design is capable of um and by that i mean you want to get the point you're looking for in that curve bracketed by at least one below and one above uh if you start breaking cylinders too late like say you have a mix design a high early mix design that um is 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 um engineered so that you get uh, a cylinder up to strength in 24 hours like say pt strength uh 3750 or whatever you're looking for if you have uh, a mix design that is engineered um that's that's i guess classified as a high early mix design you may want to start that curve as early as say 12 hours we've had people start their curves as early as eight hours after they they cast all their cylinders because they don't want to miss that that point that they're looking for. So it depends on what what your client needs, right? Yes, what you're saying. Uh, that's why and, it's that's why it's important to have a, uh, a kind of a meeting of the minds of everybody that's involved with the project, um, with the general contractor, the concrete sub, the testing lab, the ready mix company, everybody has to be on the same page as to um, as to what you what you're doing. Right. And you got to get buy in from the, the engineer record in the engineer. Yes. Yeah. What's the. Uh, what kind of pushback do you get on these? I mean, I, I assume I, I mean, I ran across it. What kind of um, if, if a concrete contractor wants to use this uh, technology on their project what kind of pushback do you typically hear from uh engineers um uh, in in most cases it is uh lack of experience with it um so th th there is it, it never it, if nobody's ever used this technology before which in this day and age uh can be kind of rare to see go back 20 years ago it um, it was even rarer to see anybody using it. I I, I tell people that uh, when I first started doing this, it was more state of the art technology. Um, now it's um, it, it, it it honestly it's more state of the industry um, because of several things. And I don't want to get off on a tangent, but um, because of uh, tight timelines, schedules that people have to keep they need to do uh, um, everything they can in order to get that project finished on time. And if it if they can save a day or two per pour by using concrete maturity um, and, and still keep everybody safe and the project humming along as it should, then um, it's, it, it's a fantastic uh, technology to, to get into. But uh, getting back to your question, it's um, I guess I, I best expressed uh, years and years ago, I had a big EPC uh, firm um, concrete technology guy told me that in the construction world, and this has been going on for decades and decades, is that if something new comes along, it may take in, in, in the like, say, IT industry, it may take 15 months for everybody to uh, start using it, a new software system, a new uh, 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 whatever. I don't very much like IT. Um, in the construction world, it may take 15 years in, <laughs> for everybody to start adopting it and start using it. So there is um, there's a familiarity uh, concept that has to um, uh, come aboard with 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 people that that have not seen this before. Right, and you got to plan ahead too. And and there is some advanced planning. Yes. Yes. So if you're not planning ahead and not doing the work that needs to be done and getting, like you said, buy-in from all, from everyone involved, 
the ready mix suppliers got to buy in the third party uh, testing lab. They got to buy in. And of course, the engineer record. General contractor typically, in, at least in my experience, they if you're telling them, hey, you can you save them schedule time, then they're all about it. So they're easy. To Absolutely. Fix, but that's those three three groups, the ready mix supplier, third party inspector and uh, the engineer record are the ones uh, that seem to push back. And like you said, it's uh, generally they don't know what it is. And then you try to you got to have a meeting just to explain what it is and and uh, the advantages of it. And uh, but uh, I think it's going to come more. Uh, the sensors are going to be even more important now that we're now we're screwing around with the uh, ready mix um, uh, designs based on the amount of cement because cement is supposedly bad for the environment. So now we're looking at reducing the amount of cement in the mix designs to uh, be more friendly to the environment, which, as you know, less cement you got the typically the longer it takes to uh, for concrete to reach strength. Um, I'm seeing now there's there a push to instead of meeting 28 days, say a 5000 mix has to meet uh, in 28 days at 5000 strength, they're going to a 56, which to me, again, it's this is new to me, but uh, that sounds like um, that means you're going to see lower strength in those uh, initial uh, days, uh, say the first seven days, which is very important to the concrete contractor for removing formwork and stressing and all that. Um, so I think knowing what's going on in with the in-place concrete versus that cylinder is going to even be more important that we're uh, looking at, I guess, refining these mixed designs. Yeah, I, I do have to say that, um, oh, this, this goes back at least 10 years or so, and and it was uh, your company, Baker, down, uh, in another region down in Houston, who was uh, actually one of the, I guess, more or less one of the early adopters of, of using maturity and, and using it as kind of their, uh, one of their means of construction. Um, it, it was kind of a proof of concept thing. So, um, they had a, a, a project uh, in Houston. It was a couple of buildings and it was there. They were post tension buildings and they were mid rise, uh, but they had a choice of using uh, a couple of different mix designs. One was a kind of a high early mix design uh, as opposed to a standard one. Um, I'm going to make some numbers up because I, I, I don't remember what the exact ones were, but the high early mix design was like, say, five dollars more a yard. Mm -hmm. because it had more cement in it and they decided that they wanted to try the standard mix design and still keep their same schedule of, of pouring and post tensioning in 24 hours or less because they were leveraging the fact that they had more concrete in place in the deck and that concrete was generating more heat and retaining more heat oh, for a yeah. longer period of time yeah. they saved themselves they, they kept on the, the their original schedule and saved themselves five dollars a yard now, if you're talking you know, on a big project of 40,000 yards in that in that horizontal concrete, um, that's that's quite a lot of money that they saved. Yeah, no, that's an excellent point. So you're actually taking the temperature of that big mass of concrete versus, again, that that uh, breaking that tiny cylinder. Right. Um, so yeah, that's uh, so it's a could be a money saver for sure. Uh, the uh, the um, so you were saying based on there was uh, one other thing that I uh, was thinking of the sensors do they the sensors that you all provide are those the ones that they can measure the the moisture content too wasn't there something else that they can do for for a project not just purely for a concrete contractor. As far as the breaks, uh, uh, there is, uh, there's a, 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 there are a couple of our competitors that have 
interest, interestingly enough, um, over the course of just the past maybe five years, six years, uh, all kinds of competitors have, have popped up out of nowhere just because, like I said, uh, this has become more state of the industry kind of thing. Uh, I think there's a, a couple of people out there that that um, have sensors that that a, a actually measure the relative humidity of concrete for flooring situations. Um, uh, our, our particular system is used mainly for two purposes. One is concrete maturity and the other one was is for mass concrete. So just simply just tracking temperatures in mass concrete. Right. And uh, as far as what what can you explain what mass concrete is and how those sensors help with that? Sure. Um, mass concrete is defined. Uh, well, there's numerous different uh, different de definitions of mass concrete, but in essence, mass concrete is um, any amount of concrete that generates um, enough heat that the uh, that that heat can be sometimes you can have too much heat and that um, the, the, the differential between the, the amount of heat that's being generated in the center of that concrete as opposed to what's in the surface can result in things like uh, thermal cracking. Um, DEF uh, uh, issues, and so uh, just like a mixed design can be engineered for maturity purposes, you can engineer mixed designs for mass concrete, which which is uh, typically designed to reduce the heat that is generating, and and spread that heat out for a longer period of time. Oh, I gotcha. And so you're just same same purpose. Um, just different application. An application, yes. Yes. And now um, uh, the new AC, a, ACI way of thinking is that um, you can actually use uh, maturity in conjunction with with um, temperature monitoring and mass concrete. And uh, a very simple way of looking at it, extremely simple way of looking at it, is that the stronger concrete gets the more resistant it, it's going to be to thermal stresses placed placed upon it as that concrete is curing. So um, there are specialty engineers out there that can, uh, for mass concrete situations, can draw up a um, a, uh, a performance based thermal control plan that takes consideration the strength gain of that concrete over time. Gotcha. Um, if if uh, I'm sure you've helped other others that are trying to utilize this technology, is there a way, is there a technique that you would recommend for someone that's trying to get the meters to be used on the on the project uh, to maybe satisfy a, a structural engineer that's, uh, I guess, hesitant to use the technology? What what do you recommend to someone, a concrete contractor that's trying to do that? Uh, for someone that's trying to, uh, say, start up a project by using this, um, it, it, like I said before, there is there is a, a comfort level that has to be attained by everybody involved with the project. So, um, uh, it, it, granted, so yeah, it, it, they'll they'll develop the maturity curves as that project is starting out. They'll they will also break cylinders um, just so there's a comfort level with the engineer. Now, um, typically, uh, it, it, the, the time of year that, that projects happens uh, has a lot to do with the kind of data that you will see out of, uh, out of some of these projects. In, in some of the colder climates in the wintertime, um, the difference between what you will see, uh, like, say, at two days in the structure itself and when you break a, 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 a cylinder at two days, in, in, in colder climates that the difference between those two will be um, pretty slim uh, and it, 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 it's hard to predict what any because of uh, what any project you're going to see out of it because of you know mixed designs that are used um, supplemental heating that's going on um, so as, as summertime months come along you get the added benefit of um, uh, the hotter ambient conditions having an effect on the curing temperature of the concrete. Um, so you will see wider differences, at, like say at, at a two-day maturity uh, reading, 
as opposed to a two day cylinder that you break. Um, once everybody can see, that if you even look at just the temperature graph of, um, say you'll place a temperature sensor in a cylinder and you'll have your maturity sensors, your temperature sensors placed in deck. If you could just see the difference between what those two are giving out, you may have a deck reach 130 degrees, whereas the cylinder may only reach, say, 90 degrees in that first 24 hour period. So, yeah, there's there's a comfort level that has to be reached. And with any system out there, I think it should be able to put out enough information uh, as far as maturity, as far as temperature, so that everybody can see what those differences are. Yeah. And once once uh, the project is moving along smoothly, um, I think that things will get in kind of a rhythm <clears throat> as far as predictability, as far as how long it's going to take that deck to come up to strength. Then that level of comfort will be um, will be um, um, uh, yeah, I, I guess gained a lot uh, quicker. And then, uh, the, like say, the next project that comes along, uh, once they have that that baseline of what they did in this project, as long as they follow the the same steps they did with the according to ASTM, um, things will will uh, over the course of years, uh, as I said before. Um, there'll be more of a, a state of the industry kind of thing, more than just a state of the art kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think I told you uh, offline that the last one I did with the uh, maturity sensors was 04, but actually I remember now that it was, I, I did a project five years ago, about five years ago, we used them. And what we did is, like you said, you put uh, a sensor in the cylinder and then you put a sensor uh in in the end place in the deck um and then so you can see the temperatures in both and uh and compare the two and obviously by that point we already went through the process and got our got our correla correlation uh our chart so we knew what the the breaks were going to be based on the temperature um again though the structural engineer was not on board with just going with the sensors they still wanted to break cylinders too so we were able to show them hey in this cylinder it's at this temperature in the deck it's at this greater temperature but i can still tell you what that cylinder is going to break at so we used to we used to tell them before they broke the cylinder hey that cylinder that has the sensor in it, it's going to break at this strength based on the maturation curve that we created at the beginning of the project before the project yes. started so so when once we were telling the engineer where the cylinder was going to break they were comfortable with what we knew what was going on in the deck they say hey you know it's it could be 40 degrees hotter in that deck than it was in in, in one of those cylinders six by 12 cylinders sitting on the you know nearby on the deck covered with a a, a blanket or whatever um we were able to predict what the cylinder broke at and so since we were able to predict what the cylinder broke at they were they were comfortable that we were predicting what the the in place concrete was at um, now I, I uh one of the more important aspects of concrete maturity is that uh maturity is is only as good as the mix design uh right so the original mix design that you created your curve out of uh maturity is only as good as that as that that mix is being kept consistent throughout the course of the project. As I said before, each and every mix design may have its own unique heat of hydration curve based upon the things that are in it. So the validation process of using maturity, which is spelled out in the ASTM as well, is, um, and so and I'll give you an example. So as that project is going along, um, maybe every pour or every other pour, You'll take as as little as three cylinders. You'll 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 break two. Uh, I'm sorry, four cylinders. You'll break three, and then you'll place a maturity sensor in the fourth. As early as you started that original curve, say at day one, um, you'll break the three cylinders, take a maturity reading off the fourth, and the software will plot that point somewhere along that original curve. Um, as long as as you stay within plus or minus ten percent of that original curve then you know that you have the same mix design come out that day as it did originally back 
months ago when you first developed your curves. Um, if, if that point pops outside of 10% by a significant amount, um, then you should, probably should investigate as to what changed in the mix design. Yeah, so you got to have a, a ready mix supplier that's quality. Let's put it that right, way. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, this, <laughs> this is the quality control mixes. aspect. If, if, if of you have a mature. if you have a supplier that's not consistent with their mixes, then this doesn't work. But yes. uh, typically, on a project where you're you're investing and in utilizing this type of technology, you're usually usually using a a, a, a high quality ready mix supplier, anyways. Um, yeah, and and uh, you know uh, this has evolved into a, um, a a technology to where a lot of the bigger uh, ready mix companies now have a catalog of the mix designs and their and their calibration curves associated with it. So um, they'll they'll come to pre construction meetings with uh, numerous numerous mix designs proposed to use in the project. And uh, and have the maturity curves that are associated with it. Oh, so if uh, if someone's at uh that's listening to this and has a project in a location throughout the states or something, could they reach out to you all and ask you which ready mix supplier already uses your technology or is comfortable with it, or is it better just for the concrete contractor to be the spear of the or the tip of the spear? um we we can give some recommendations but it's it's, it's typically just uh, for the concrete contractor to be the to be the focal point here yeah i got you well mark i appreciate your time today if folks want to reach out to you and learn more about uh the technology uh how do they get a hold of you what's the best way um they can uh always call me uh uh my uh phone number is 314-713 1107. I'm based out of St. Louis. Um, our company covers the entire United States, plus um, also international as well. Um, my email address is mchase, M C H A S E, at RPX Tech, and that's T E C H dot com. Um, so anybody that wants to uh, learn more, just um, argue with me. That's fine. Just give me a call. <laughs> Just question you, uh, and we'll put all of Mark's contact information in the show notes so you all don't have to listen to that last 10, 15 seconds over and over again. Um, we'll get that for you. But, Mark, I really appreciate your time today and uh, hope to see you again soon. Yeah, me too, Seth. Thanks very much. Sir. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Concrete Logic Podcast. If you did enjoy, please hit subscribe on your favorite podcast listening app and share with others that you would think would find value in in the podcast. I look forward to having more discussions. Please tune in and we'll see you on the next episode of Concrete Logic Podcast.